Another approach, uh, as opposed to estimation, is to conduct a hypothesis test. So keep in mind these two big tracks of inferential statistics is estimation and hypothesis testing. So with hypothesis testing, the idea is we're going to use a sample of data to test claims made about a population. So we're now going to cover in detail the one sample z-test for a sample mean. There are five main steps for testing a hypothesis test. Uh, first of all, this sort of preliminaries, you should state the target population. So are you interested in, in generalizing to the population of the United States or maybe all beers brewed in a particular week? State your target population. And then what you need to do is you should state your parameters of interest. So are you actually interested in the population mean? Because maybe you're actually interested in some other quantity of the population. So once you have those preliminaries out of the way, we have five tests once you know you're interested in the population mean. First is you state the null and alternative hypotheses in terms of H subscript zero or H subscript A. Right? Sometimes you'll hear H subscript zero called H naught. But the key point is that you need to express your hypotheses in this language. Then what you do is you select a significance level alpha. Alpha, we typically set to 0.05 by convention in the social sciences, but you will see that in some contexts, in some research fields, people use a different level of alpha. And that just reflects a different um, perspective on how willing people are to, ha to make a type 1 error. In some fields, they don't want to make a type 1 error. Uh, very frequently, so they set alpha to a lower level, alpha to 0.01 uh, rather than 0.05. And then what you need to do is you need to compute the test statistic, which we call z. So that's the third step. And then what you do is you assume the null is true. So you say, well, I think, you know, I'm just going to assume the null hypothesis is true, and then you make a decision by either comparing the test statistic z with the critical value or values, or you compare the p-value with some significance level based on alpha. And then what you do is you state your conclusion. I also highly recommend as sort of an additional step to calculate a 95% confidence interval or Z interval to un better understand what's going on. So first of all, step one, state the hypotheses. So the null hypothesis, it's almost always an equality. So we use mu naught, mu subscript zero, as some claimed value for the population mean. Right? So if you think the population mean is 50, let's say, the null is going to be mu equals 50. So mu naught is 50. The alternative has three different variations. You can either have what we call a two-sided z-test, where the alternative is simply that the population mean is not equal to mu naught or mu subscript 0. It's just not equal to that claimed value. or we might have a right-sided z-test, in which the alternative is that the population mean is greater than the claimed value, or the, a left-sided z-test, where the alternative is that the population mean is less than some claimed value. Most commonly, you will see a two-sided z-test, and we'll focus a little bit more on two-sided z-tests, but in some contexts, a right-sided or left-sided z-test is also used. Then what you do is you choose a significance level alpha. Okay, again, Typically, researchers use alpha of 0.05. And this is the criterion for what we call statistical significance. Right? This is a, a very important because our level of alpha, right, it's, it determines, in some sense, our conclusions. Right? We use alpha to compare with our p-values. We also use alpha to calculate the critical values on which we uh, base or evaluate our uh, test statistics. And we also use alpha to compute confidence intervals, right? because a confidence interval is 1 minus alpha times 100. So if alpha is 0.05, uh, it's 0.95 times 100 is a 95% confidence interval. So choosing alpha will affect our decision whether we reject the null or not. And again, that's because alpha is the probability of a type 1 error or false alarm. Right? So the question is, how willing are you to have a type 1 error? By convention, right? Uh, in the social sciences, we set alpha to 0.05 with the idea being that about 1 in 20 times you're going to commit a false alarm, a type 1 error, but you know, the idea is by convention we're okay or comfortable with that. In other contexts or other fields, alpha is going to be at a lower level. All right, and with that, 
uh, we're going to explore this idea of setting up hypotheses and working with setting uh, a level of alpha, which will in turn affect our conclusions with a hypothesis test.